Folks, welcome to this week's Bible Saving Current Adventure. Glad you're with us. And if you're watching live online, welcome. If you're trying to listen on the phone line, good luck. But anyway, we're glad you're out there. We have some difficulties as usual getting everything lined out here. But nonetheless, if you're out there, if you watch this on DVD or listen on CD, if you get it once a month, thank you for doing that. I know dozens of y'all do that, and we appreciate that. It tells you to invite your family over and friends over. Have Bible study. And that means a lot to us that you'll share us in your home. Uh, and, I, and it's just a blessing to have you there. Before we get started in the big stuff, I want to share a little bit, if I could, a little bit of laughter this morning and some uh, things made to ease tension a little bit before you start. I've got several quotes I want to read to you. Now I'm going to get started with the Reader's <coughs> Digest. Now I want, and uh, this is something that uh, they're saying, uh, instead of saying, I make Jesse Simpson look like a rock scientist, say this. My definition of an intellectual is someone who listens to William Tell Overture without thinking of the Lone Ranger. Oh. Yeah. I don't think I can do that. That's right, that is the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Instead of saying this, it's really hard to maintain a one on one relationship if the other person is not going to allow me to be with other people. Say this bigamy is having one husband too many, monogamy is the same. <laughs> <laughs> so I won't get in there. But anyway. Yeah. Socrates said, my advice to you is get married. If you find a good wife, you'll be happy. If not, you become a philosopher. Oh. <laughs> That's how he did it. Huh? I guess. And Henry Clapp said, he, he is a self-made man and worships his creator. There you go. <laughs> That's pretty That's cool. I know people cool. like it. How do you... Let's see. Let's think skip one here. Back in the right page here. Dogs versus cats. A, a dog teaches a boy fidelity, perseverance, and to turn around three times before lying down. <laughs> cats are smarter than dogs. You can't get eight cats to pull a sled through snow. <laughs> That's true. Uh, Democrats versus Republicans. The Democrats are the party that says government will make you smarter, taller, richer, and remove crabgrass from your lawn. The Republicans are the party that says government doesn't work, and then they get elected to prove it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that's, not, that's really not funny. It really is true, you know? Truth I, I'll ask you something, y'all, this. Uh, how do you tell if a hillbilly driving a pickup truck is married? Good girl. There's tobacco juice on both side mirrors. Oh, oh. oh my goodness. <laughs> 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 okay, a little bit of knowledge, useless knowledge, maybe. But do y'all know how we how we got the name a dollar? We call it a buck. That's one buck. You know how that come from? Seriously, mm -hmm. I knew this, but I found it here in this article because in the 1700s, trappers could sell a single buckskin for one dollar. Ah, so they say, oh, but we'll give you a buck. Oh, wow. The word the fuzz. You ever heard? Ever heard? Police called the fuzz yeah. mm -hmm. because London bobbies once wore fuzzy helmets. Okay. Oh, yeah. The limelight, you all may know this one, because theater spotlights used to burn lime to create light. That's right. Mm, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. see, see, Natasha, I'm smart. I teach you all these things. You've got to call it down. I'm really pass you a good grade. <laughs> uh, here's a sign that says, no, we do, not ha we do not have Wi-Fi. Talk to each other. Ah. <laughs> now, that is an excellent idea. I made the mm. rule in my home, and I'm not a mean guy, but if we have a family function... Telephones checked at the door. We're going to talk to each other. I get so disgusted walking to a family dinner, everybody's sitting around on the computer and punching on their cell phone. Nobody's talking to anybody. I can do. I can get on cell phone by myself. Why not be somebody else for it? Mm -hmm. We're going to sit around communicating with each other on oh, the cell phone. They're texting. Yeah. Here's a sign on the door. Push if that if that doesn't work. Pull. If that doesn't work, we must be closed. <laughs> Today's offer, buy any two drinks and pay for, and pay for them both. And I like this one. Boneless chicken for sale per dozen, 35 cents. Get it? Boneless chicken per dozen, 35 uh, uh, cents. Uh, <laughs> Eggs. You told me you spend your whole life trying to make me happy, wife to the husband. I didn't expect to live this long. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll move on now. I had to share that, folks. You got to laugh a little bit, okay? I, I'm not going to... 
there's no point trying to camouflage it. We're in a mess. We're in a mess. We're in a world of hurt. Our nation's been turned into hell just like the Bible said it would. And if you're anywhere near a moral, sane individual, you probably don't think you're the one crazy because everybody around you is, is really insane. And they'll look at you like you're insane. Right. I was watching news the night. I do watch world news. I want to see what they're saying about what's going on. And you watch the news. Once you see behind the scenes, you'll see how smooth they are at bringing across lies or half truths, which are more dangerous. Mm -hmm. They had a new show on TV. I don't know what name it was. Something with family. Some I, I know what it is. I don't watch it. But it's they're going to have the first transgender child on there. Uh. First transgender child. For, for what? Uh, what was the show? Uh, I don't know. Something about family. I don't. I didn't catch. I just. So it's a new show. With it's a new show with, with, with transgender. The child will be wanting to go from whatever from boy to girl, whatever the like, whatever it is, on mainstream TV. That, that's their push. They're pushing. They sure it. it is. Pushing it. Pushing it. Pushing I still can't get over the fact that 30 years ago that was an abomination. And 60 years ago you went to jail for it. Oh yeah. I just, my mind just can't wrap around that we're in this kind of deep mess, but we really are. Whenever you see perversion being applauded, you know the nation's done. And Trump will not change that. Mm -hmm. Let's move on. I want to tell you a few verses in Jeremiah chapter 17. One verse, I, you probably remember I've been out, but I want to share a little bit below that verse too today. And I want you, if you would, I know that this is almost a lost art, but let's think. I may just sit down in the thing and got stopped. Your brain just shuts down, okay? Have done it for so long. What? Yeah. No. <laughs> That's when I got a thunking mode. In the alpha <laughs> thunking mode. I go into clunking mode. But uh, in the office, uh, Thursday, Thursday in the office generally very busy today. I mean, the girls are all working the buns off getting paperwork done, orders out, and I'm on the phone. And Thursday one of those days when my brain was firing about one cylinder out of eight. You ever had days like this? <laughs> feel like you just stopped up right here as far as you can get. But anyway, so I understand that so some days it's difficult to digest things. And when you see so much confusion and so much frustration and fear, it kind of bum fuzzles you a little bit. You just mm -hmm. have a hard time wrapping your mind around that, don't you? Right. You do. How do we get so confused? What, what happened? But in Jeremiah chapter 5, so I'm sorry, 17, I'm going to read verse 5. Now, I want you to listen very carefully. I'm not going to get into all the details of how this worked and how we got here because I'm going to go with everybody else. But thus saith the Lord. Now, if the Lord says something, should we pay attention? Mm -hmm. Amen. What was that old commercial of so-and-so speaks, everybody listens? A financial advisor? No. Yeah, yeah anyway. But anyway, cursed be the man. Merrill Lynch, wasn't it? Mer mm. Merrill Lynch. It doesn't sound right. I don't maybe be said, but whenever somebody mentioned his name, everybody in the bus got real quiet. Okay. Cursed be the man that trusts in man, even if his name is Donald Trump, mm -hmm. and make his flesh his arm. Oh, he's going to save us. Roosevelt's going to save us. He's going to give us Social Security. Uh, they're going to save us. They're going to give us Medicare. They're going to take care of us. They're going to give us free housing. Ever heard that? Mm -hmm. So who do we vote for? The one who promised the most to give us. Right. We vote for a pocketbook. And uh, pay attention to the next part of this because this is very important. This is, this is a soul threatening statement. Whose heart departeth from the Lord. Mm -hmm. If you put your trust in man and trust him with everything that you, uh, our God can supply, is your heart with Christ or with, with man? Now come on. If you compromise your truth, Joe. Mm -hmm. To keep your paycheck, what is that? Yeah, it's me. Okay. Isn't there another thing called idolatry? It is, idolatry. <laughs> For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. Listen to the next one, please. Blessed is a man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. Yeah. Amen. I know for sure, from speaking to myself personally, I couldn't function long without that hope. Mm -hmm. How many ever get disgusted with yourself? Always. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, really, let's be honest. How many get disgusted with yourself when you look at what we did do or didn't do and you think, why does he <coughs> take time and talk to me? Grace, right? Mm -hmm. But trust in the Lord, for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters 
and that spreadeth out her roots by the river. And shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green. And shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Isn't that beautiful? Mm-hmm. Now listen to the next one. Please, the heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? What's the Proverbs 3, 5 say? Lean not unto your understanding, and mm-hmm. all thou wish acknowledge him. Okay? Mm-hmm. The heart, without the Holy Spirit in there, is as dangerous as a cock pistol on the head of a four-year-old. Hmm. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Is that pretty clear? Mm-hmm. I, I said uh, yesterday... But it's very symbolic if you look at quarters, the old quarters. George Washington was facing, in God we trust. Mm-hmm. The new quarters, it's behind him. We turned our back on God. It's, it's symbolic. I it mean, is symbolic. It is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and, and certainly when they redesign a coin, they, they don't just start moving no, things no. around. There's a reason. I believe that was done by people who know exactly what they're doing. They're serving the dark side. And they said, let's put something in here just in their face again. Because they love they love to put it in your face. Sure. They do. And most people don't, don't even notice it. That's the sad part. Well, they kind of are not, not seeing it because they yeah. think that we're all stupid. But whenever you turn from the Almighty God to we the people, and then we see that fall apart, the next thing you know, God is in the background. That's right. We're now God's. But away with some good news, you know, not the good news that having riots in Charlotte. You know what happened down there, and I don't know all that happened in any of these places. They just had another shooting. At, where was it? Yesterday, uh, uh, another black man was holding a vaping cigarette, and they shot him on top of the gun. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and and but I had one <clears throat> one family member comment the other day. Well, the cop in Charlotte uh, made as a woman. No, it's Oklahoma where this happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, Said that she may got scared. I said, and, and, and didn't think. I said, I'm going to tell you what, I mean, when you put on a uniform, you're responsible. That's right. If, if you're going to wear a uniform and say, I have authority to help carry this gun, you better know how to use it and when to use it. Well, they go, they go through all kinds of They're training. They're supposed to, exactly. They go through all kinds of training, so it's not supposed to be a reflex, it's supposed to be a response. Response. But, and that's exactly why the FBI came out with those no hesitation targets. It yeah. was to train those folks, don't hesitate. You, you see someone and you think it's a gun, I don't care if it's a grandma in a, in a, ba- in a bathrobe or, or a girl in a park holding a baby. And that's a, You think about it. That's, that's exactly what what's happening. Yeah, so there is no excuse. If you're going to put the uniform on and you pull a trigger when you shouldn't, you're a murderer. Right. Anyway, in Charlotte, violence sparks self-defense gun buying spree. The store run out of guns. That's a good sign. I can see there isn't a gun there. <laughs> yes, oh yeah, there's all going. <laughs> so, I want to tell you what. And who was it said a gun in the hand is better than it's better than than a, a cop on the phone? <laughs> true. So anyway, true. And this was a paper, of course, a few days ago. You all probably already knew about this. Phil Hoodloff was on the ballot to run for governor, and the, our state supreme court in West Virginia took him off the ballot and some others. They went before a federal judge the following Friday. And was reinstated on the ballot. And, and that was it. There should have been big news. I mean, the state Supreme Court is overridden. It was a and over with. A blip. Man. A blip. A blip. A blip. And, and this is amazing. I don't, we, we don't understand what a big deal this is. The state Supreme Court was overridden. Now, that is huge. Yeah, it is. So, yeah, it, just, it just showed you. They thought they could do it. It's maybe. right. It, it I mean, just. They can't do it. It shows you how untenuous their decision was. Absolutely, and exactly how arrogant they are. And that the state legislature passed that law, too. There's yeah. now, it's not just the Supreme Court. It's all over. It's all over. And that the attorney general told the secretary of state, "You can't do anything. We can't do anything about this." Uh huh. But it got overturned, or yeah. something. Yeah, there's something wrong with this picture. They're flaunting in her face again. So anyway, a victory in this part for us. Anyway, praise God. Mm-hmm. Phil Hoodlock's on the ballot, and Phil Hoodlock's going to get at least one vote. Lynn's going to vote for him. Oh. <laughs> okay. But anyway, seriously, I mean, that, that was a big deal, and it was not the other side. This should make national news. And they mentioned to keep my name out of just about everywhere. They did. Absolutely they did. <laughs> That's okay. The Week magazine. 
All in America, a Baptist pastor who serves as a high school football announcer in Alabama resigned after reportedly telling fans he didn't stand for the national anthem to line up to line up over there by the fence and let your military personnel take a few shots at you. <laughs> pastor Alan Joyner claims he was misquoted, but he said overstepped by authority my authority as an announcer to express my patriotic views. You know, he got up and tells us if you don't want to stand for the, for the flag, then let them shoot at you. Uh, think about it. Good work, good week for living for for good week for the living language after YOLO, whatever YOLO is, an acronym for a, you only what well, you only live once was officially added to the Oxford English Dictionary. Other new entries include splendiferous, gender fluid, Ooh. and moobs, used to describe usually large male breast. Moobs. Those moobs. Those are now part of the English Dictionary. In that water. Oh. Good week for the power of in- incumbency after New York State <coughs> lawmaker who was facing fraud charges won the Republican Party primary despite him committing suicide four days prior to the election. What they missed him. The, the late assembly, Assemblyman Bill Nojay won 60% of the, the vote. And he was dead. Of course, dead folks vote down Boone County. <laughs> That's right. Anyway. Both they can get elected, so <laughs> nothing big deal. Bad week for consumers, customer service after Amtrak responded to a passenger who was stuck in one of the elevators seven months ago. What? We're sorry to hear that, the company tweeted in answer to the February, to the February SOS tweet sent by Amanda Carpenter. Are you still in the elevator? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. Duh. laughs> well, they run the train. Well, anyway. Maybe you can order out. A Philadelphia woman was stunned when a five pound catfish fell from the sky and smacked her square in the face. Lisa Labrie was walking through a city park when she heard a rustling in the trees above her and was struck by a 16 inch fish, which witnesses said was dropped by a passing hawk. Lobry suffered a small cut to the face and a lingering species odor. I smelled so bad afterwards, she said, I was smelled disgusting. Lobry added that she's a keen of anger, but in decades of fishing, it was his first time, first catfish that caught my, that my face caught. <laughs> what, are the, what are the odds? Well, we had a hawk take a chicken one time, and I found, <clears throat> I found it on a fence, on the top uh, barbed wire strand of a fence hanging there. Really? It had, it had to have been a hawk or something, dropped it. Did he, oh, didn't eat it. No. No, just dropped it. Just dropped it. A Kansas man allegedly robbed a bank at gunpoint because he preferred being in jail to going home to his wife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Police said that either after Larry Ripple, 70, stole nearly $3,000 from Kansas City Branch, he sat down in the bank's lobby and told a security guard, I'm the guy you're looking for. Police said Ripple confessed that he argued with his wife earlier that day, telling her he'd rather be in jail than at home. He was charged with bank robbery and released. It's not known if Ripple returned home to his wife. <laughs> was that his punishment, being released? <laughs> oh, oh, Phil, now you're, you're married, buddy. You're okay. Uh, my friends tell me this is from comedian Gary Shanley. My friends tell me I have an in- intimate, I have an intimacy problem, but they don't really know me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Groucho Marx said, "There are many. There, there, are, there. These are my values." If you don't like them, I have others. Does that pretty well <laughs> that fit today's like society? Today, yeah. Here's Hillary Clinton speaking. Donald Trump doesn't have the temperament for president because he re- he resorts to name calling, and half and see and I'm trying to and half his supporters are racist, sexist, homophobic. A xenophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, xenophobic. you name it. What's a xenophobic? Xenophobes. <laughs> you have to look that one up. Uh, they're afraid of xylophones. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> All right, move on. I know it's a fear. You know, if, if this stuff wasn't... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, it's, 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 a fear, it's, a, yeah. it's a big show. Barton and Bailey I, never I just, had anything on it. It really isn't funny, but you almost got to laugh. Yeah. And, I can't, and people are lining up to vote for these people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Only in America, a Minnesota restaurant owner, you upset over the multiple stabbings by a Somalia immigrant at a nearby mall, has put a Muslim get out sign outside his shop. Dan Rugender said that it's time to stop worrying about the PC crowd and do what is right. He said because his, because, he said his business is up so much that he had to add extra workers. 
Wow. Wow. Let, let your money be your vote. Exactly. The Arizona Supreme Court had appealed state law that could result in criminal... Now listen, folks, this is serious. This is unbelievably stupid, but serious. And the Arizona Supreme Court has upheld a state law that could result in criminal charges against parents or other caregivers who change diapers on, or bathe children. What? Yep. The law forbids anyone touching any, any part of the genitals, anus, or female breast of children under, under age 15 and does not require that the contact be sexual in nature. The court said anyone wrongly charged could raise lack of sexual motivation as an affirmative defense. You really? I said. Who's going to want to wash their baby? Good week for uh, good week for kids who can't sit still after middle school middle school math teacher in North Carolina installed bike pedals under the desk to help students burn off excess energies and stop fidgeting. The kids loved them and, and, and said Bethany Lambert. I definitely noticed up up noticed grades going up. What happened to recess? Mm -hmm. they, you remember they, recess? They, they ban, right. They're banning recess. Recess was a time every hour or so you got 15 minutes, out, 10 minutes, whatever. But you want to sit and play ball. Yeah. Children have to be active. Mm -hmm. they but instead of that, they drug them down. They medicate Exactly. Them. Bad week for school spirit after high school's cheerleaders in, in Provo, Utah, were told not to wear their uniforms to class on practice day because a male student complained that the short skirts were causing him to have impure thoughts. Well, well, what can I say? Bad week for loving thy neighbor after a nine-year-old Florida man was arrested twice in a week for violating a local law by feeding homeless people. They were, they were very gentle, said Arnold Art Abbott of the Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale Police. I think they feel a little guilty doing, it, uh, doing their jobs. Well, they should feel guilty of this man feeding somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, of all the stupid laws. Now, this you'll like. I may mention it last time, but not really. This is in the Week magazine. Gabalron Vaswana, U.S. pastor deported. An anti-gay Arizona pastor was reported from Botswana this week after he said on a local radio show that gays and lesbians should be stoned to death. Stephen Anderson of the Faithful but Word Baptist Church arrived in Botswana last week after South Africa refused him a visa, saying his sermons amounted to hate speech. Botswanian President Ian Grandma said he ordered police to go directly to the radio station arrest and deport Anderson. We don't want hate speech in this country, he said. Let him do it in his own country. All right, let's move on. The evidence that ISIS is fake. Now, folks, this is the Time, mm -hmm. the Week magazine. The evidence that ISIS is fake. That's something. To think about that. It's in a major magazine. What, what if ISIS is a creation of Western intelligence agencies, said Noah Ashabroni. It's pretty clear that 9-11 was an inside job. As a strange credulity that four hijacked planes flew around so freely, trade U.S. airspace and hit the World Trade Center and Pentagon one by one. Remember that the commanders of the attacks trained at U.S. flight schools. The attacks were most likely planned in advance by Americans who just to justify the war on terror and invasion of Muslim lands. Now we're seeing the next phrase phase with the rise of the supported Islamic terrorist group ISIS. Why is it that most ISIS members that we see on propaganda videos are not Arab but foreigners? ISIS may be just another story concocted to justify the partitioning of and occupation of the Middle East. Mm -hmm. and it goes on from there. That's a very good statement. Just, just when they were formed, they were driving American trucks. They had a huge convoy of all American trucks. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And then we're dropping uh, armaments to people who are supposed to fight them. But somehow we dropped them in the wrong place and we gave them to these people that... Oh, going messed up again. Yeah, messed up again. But in a major mm -hmm. magazine, this is starting to leak out a little bit. Mm-hmm. About time. It is. The false, they call them false flags. They've been doing them for all way before we were born. Now, I'll ask a question here. Winning a house seat cost an average of $1.5 million in campaign spending in 2014, up 171% since 1994. Winning a Senate seat costs $9.7 million, up 115%. Who's going to spend $10 million to get $130-something thousand a year? Yep. Got to beat you just beat. You yep, just I did beat just beat Not for me. I'm done. <laughs> uh, this, you know, you know, remember what happened in March 20, 2011? Something big happened in the, in the East, Far East, that is, I mean, really big. 
Okay, you haven't heard about news for a long time. Remember, you remember Fukushima? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's still going on. It's still going on. It's leaking out 300 tons of radiation act every day. It's polluted the whole Pacific. It's got on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. It's went up into Alaska. The fishers in Alaska are dying. Mm -hmm. I would not eat any <laughs> fish or anything from the Pacific Ocean. But, I quit buying tuna fish. Well, I don't blame you. Let's get the Atlantic somewhere. Yeah. But uh, but when you think that think about this, this was big news for about two or three months. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden it went away. The cancer rate in Japan just skyrocketed. But they're not going to talk about the news anymore because there's too much truth in it. Radiation mm -hmm. is a quiet killer. Plus. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. that's called the calling, Butch. Calling. So yeah, it is. Call the herd. But see, people's attention span go, and it's over. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's too bad that happened. We've got to do, we got to do something. The next week, oh, well, there's something else going on now. Robots sparking debate about need for a guaranteed basic income. Do you realize that they're, they're starting to put up robots up in, in fast food restaurants, kiosks, right. mm -hmm. where you can punch a button and get your food. Don't need, don't need a yeah. worker. Yeah. Okay? 40% of the jobs in America are part-time. Oh, my. 94 million people are out of work, period. But the unemployment rate stays the same. It's something wrong with that. Now I want to show you something. They admit to, they admit to, twenty trillion dollars debt. They admit to that much. I just want to, and when you stand and put this together, it's a lot of zero. That's a lot of zeros in one line, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Twenty trillion, yeah. Twenty trillion dollars. Now, twenty million conceivable, but I can't imagine it. Twenty billion. Clear out of my realm, mm -hmm. and 20 trillions outside my universe. That's what they admit to. But they, did they tell you on TV that zone that folks <clears throat> in the jobs are part-time workers? Mm -hmm. yeah. And more than that, are underpaid workers. They, they were they were making twenty dollars an hour and now working McDonald's. Mm -hmm. But they kind of, they consider them employed. Now McDonald's is considered a manufacturing job. I thought it was interesting. And how many y'all heard? Uh, we'll cover it in a minute too. But what happened at Wells Fargo? Yeah. They set up like two million accounts that didn't exist to get sales rates up, put put customer name on them, and customers losing their cars and everything now. And they've been sued for a few billion dollars. But about six months ago, Aaron Dakins, my radio producer, mm -hmm. best friend lives in North Carolina. And right next door is a lady who worked in Wells Fargo Bank. She came home one night and was so upset and so scared she didn't go back to work two weeks. That's right, I remember that. Yep, mm -hmm. and that she, by the way, she'd been laid off since then. So they told them something going on at the bank that scared her so bad she didn't go back to work. I'm convinced that's part of it. Mm -hmm. Now, Wells Fargo is about ready to get hit again for funding housing like it did back in 2008. Remember that housing mm -hmm. down, decline? The bubble. Yeah, the bubble. The bubble. Mm -hmm. They did the same thing again, and about ready to be hit with that also. Wells Fargo is going to be going under because of all this going on. They're big. They're big. But one bigger than them is Deutsche Bank, Deutsche Bank in Do Germany, Deutsche, Bank, Deutsche yeah. Bank. It is going under right now. It's going under. It's, it's under. Germany has told its people to stock up. I'm not making this up at all. Uh, what is admirable that the government, well, it is admirable that government Germany has seen fit to give its population advanced advance notice of what's coming. The fact of the matter is that something very big is happening. This news is only building upon the enormous and very serious problems that Deutsche Bank has been having during the last few months. It holds great weight in the economic perils that the global bank sector, but is also bigger than that. The social chaos, the turmoil, and the uncertainty about stability and its future is driving anxiety worldwide. How much more pressure can the system take before everything gives away? This is going to happen everywhere, even as certain individuals, nations, or corporations make headlines. Are you prepared for what happens in the aftermath? Hot on the heels of the Deutsche Bank debacle comes the next, now listen to this, the next nail in Germany's e economic coffin. German's second largest bank, Commerce Bank, is planning to cut off 10,000 jobs. When the dominoes start, it's going to go down. And Lindsay Wim told us four or five years ago in our program that when the banks go in Europe, two or three weeks later, America comes. That's what this article I brought you to is. Yeah. And derivatives are the key. You know, you know what a derivative is? 
<laughs> it's gambling. It's gambling. Yeah, it's gambling. It's, it's betting. betting. They're going to buy a bunch of the stock on something, hoping it goes up. Mm -hmm. well, the, 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 the derivative market is so big, I can't remember the number. It's up in, it's in the quadrillions. Quadrillions, yes. It's so big that no one can phantom it. But this is what took the bank down. Gambling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, should that concern us at all? The largest yeah. bank in Europe is under... Wells Fargo is going to be hit. Uh, let me ask, how many of y'all like to eat? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Three times a day. Yeah, it's a habit, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Sometimes five times a day. I started at an early age, you can't get off of it. But anyway, <laughs> you start at birth. I told y'all this thing before I tell you again, just remind you. I went, went to the Foodland store today, Marsh, to get some groceries. Lay beside me in the checkout line behind me. I don't buy hamburger and short, I have loan, but five twenty nine dollars a pound for hamburger. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. How many of y'all remember hamburger when you bought and bought pack for like 15, 20 cents a pound? About like 10 pounds a time? You don't know that, but you wouldn't even remember that. And Trello's bread for a dollar, remember that? Gallon milk was like 25 cents and gallon gas was 22 cents. Yeah. Now let's see, milk got scarcer, bread got scarcer, that's why the price went up, right? Well, bread's getting thicker slices too. <laughs> no, the dollar's come down like a rock. Russian and Chinese are ditching the dollar as Europeans start using remedy, which is the type of yuan, for currency. Euro European nations are now starting to go to the yuan for the currency. The dollar has been the world currency for decades. It's about blunder. Matter of fact, the IMF met yesterday, the 30th, to determine whether to use a yuan or not as a mm -hmm. world medium. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether they did or not. But just meeting to consider this it's going to make the dollar really plummet. It's called inflation. When Germany, I'm sorry, when, when Russia and China, who supports most of our Walmart stores and a lot more, quit using the dollars, meaning exchange, what would that cause to the price of goods coming over here? Up. Super inflation. Now, I've got to ask you all this. How many of y'all got a 20% pay increase last year? <laughs> how many, why don't we ask how many people got a 20% decrease in pay last year? Well, Again, I ask you to stop and consider this. In 1971, the year I got married, we could eat we could eat well on ten dollars a week. Mm -hmm. Really, I'm serious. Ten dollars a week? Can you imagine that? No. And ten ten dollars to buy how much today in store? Two loaves of bread and a, and a gallon of milk? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We could eat ten dollars a week because, like I said, hamburgers loaves fifteen ten fifteen depending on when you buy it is on sale. We like buy box packs. And we can live, live on that. Now, mm -hmm. i got to ask you, now it take, would take a week for a family of three or four hundred bucks? I'm mm -hmm. guessing. I, I, I shared a $20 gold piece at Dominion Post yesterday. Oh, did you? Yeah. So this is this has gone up 1,000%. Uh, yeah, or more. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of not 20, not 200, 2,000. Exactly. That's yeah. So just, but uh, how, uh, tell me, tell me the shops. How much will it take to feed four people a week now? Huh? A hundred, but hundred dollars a week doing? I don't know. I'm asking a serious question. hundred bucks a week doing? A hundred bucks, you wouldn't even. It wouldn't even be half of the back seat of your car. But on average, no, Kelly and I like two, three grocery bags. Bags, yeah. yeah. On average, Kelly and I will spend maybe, if we're doing good, between sixteen, eighty dollars a week just for the two of us. When I stop and think, yeah. ten dollars a week for me and Marsha, and, and took her as well. All mm -hmm. right. Let's say it's a hundred dollars now. Do the same thing. That's a thousand percent increase. That's a that's a hundred. Uh, t ten times. Oh yeah, thousand. Right. Yeah. So how many got a thousand percent pay increase in the last thirty four years? Thousand. Um, are we are we gaining ground, or losing ground? We're losing yeah, ground. Ten years, I've been making the same amount of money. Uh, it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Really? And, and they're taking out more for insurance and things too, aren't they? Right. Walmart was asked to make a cake for a retiring cop. That the uh, the cop one that won the cake baked like this, with a thin blue line in the, in the, in the flag to show what their job was. They did they wouldn't do it because they said it was racist. Oh. It's racist. So they tried that. It still wouldn't fly. They said because they had a thin blue line in the flag, it was racist. The cops are racist. Now it went it went beyond this, and finally, uh, this is this is a McDonald Georgia Walmart. Uh, it couldn't have said they would not refuse a homosexual. They'd be sued. Mm -hmm. But they could refuse a cop. Now, they did finally say they're sorry and they offered to make a cake that God had done somewhere else. And I'm not taking up for cops or anything else. I'm just saying, if, if this would have been a same sex marriage cake, it'd have been wonderful. Mm -hmm. But a retiring cop, when, the, when his family wasn't making a cake for his retirement, 
and they wouldn't do it. So if you had a flag that was with rainbow colors, they'd be happy. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, now, let me think of this. Homosexuality, sodomy, is hate. Sure it is. And, you know, police officers aren't generally hate. They're there to protect us, or hopefully. It's hunting season, Butch. Hunting season on Christians. That's very true. We mm-hmm. saw that three days ago. State proposes bold law to treat pot like tobacco and it expunge all records of marijuana crimes. New Jersey. Bold legislation introduced in New Jersey last week would not only treat cannabis like tobacco, legalize it, but would expunge records for individuals previously convicted of certain marijuana related crimes. Should the bill A4193 pass, convenience stores will be permitted to sell cannabis alongside cigarettes available to anyone age 19 and older. This bill will legalize marijuana by removing all criminal liability associated with the marijuana from the New Jersey Code of Criminal Justice, as well as its regulation as a controlled dangerous substance under the New Jersey Controlled Dangerous Substance Act. Now, that's a two-edged sword. Mm-hmm. It really is. It really is. I mean, anything can be abused. But a lot of people put in prison for smoking marijuana is to commit no crime at all. Well, uh, we'll see what the Dominion Post prints. But I told him, I said, I am for legalizing it. I said, not for, for budget purposes or anything else. I said, uh, uh, the government has no business telling me what I can take in my body. It's my responsibility, and I should be responsible for what I take in my body, period. And if you do something wrong after you do it, it's still responsibility. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And uh, I even said I would, I would uh, pardon every cannabis user that's in prison immediately. I said, I would, you wouldn't need the legislature to do this. No. The governor could do that. And then what, the legislature's gonna, not going to make it legal? And, and the government, governor keep pardoning them? Well, it's just a matter that's all control. It's all about control. And, and if, you look at, if you look at alcohol, it, it yes. causes far more damage oh, absolutely. Than, well, than cannabis. So we're just being hypocrites by saying, well, you can, you can use... One, not the other. Yeah, one, not the other. Well, it's, like, it's like spoken. Uh, you know, yeah, I don't agree with spoken. I think should not, no Christian should right. smoke. And I, I said, believe that. I said, I don't smoke, I don't drink, and I don't do pot. No. I said, but that's not why I'm doing it. That, that's the, the whole point. I mean, drinking does a lot more damage to home than smoking does. Yeah. And, and no one's ever smoked a cigarette from home and be with his wife. Well, I know it anyway. But dr- <laughs> being drunk can make do a lot of weird things. So, yeah, folks, we get, we get in a way to balance out what's going on here. Uh, I did read an article one time about murdering the babies, I mean, we call it abortion. And they said a woman, a woman's body do with what as she wants, right? That's what they ruled, right? A woman has right to do what she wants to with her body. Well, then how come she can't be a prostitute? It's her body. Why can't she do drugs? It's her body. Mm-hmm. But that, 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 they wouldn't print that in the paper. No, they not print that. We're, we're stuck in the paradigm that they want us to, the box. That yeah, they want us exactly. to be in. We're not thinking. No, we're not thinking. No. But, I mean, they will not print it. The fact that it's, it's her body. If they, she can murder a child, then it's her body. Mm-hmm. Why can't she do these other things? It's her body. Exactly. Anyway, I told you the other day, be careful that the, that the FBI is, going, is now opposing his press. I told you that. Oh, yeah, that. they've been doing it. Well, they, they, they finally legalized it. <laughs> U.S. government just legalized Operation Mockingbird. The FBI can now impersonate the media. Oh. FBI agents conducting undercover investigation have now been given the green light to impersonate journalists. The Justice Department determined last week, effectively legalizing the government's most notorious propaganda program, Operation Mockingbird. Last Thursday, the Department of Justice Office of Inspector General published what's become the subject of outrage for journalists, civil, civil and constitutional rights of advocates, and legal experts, uh, allowing agents to infiltrate media organizations for any reason threatens to utterly undermine public trust. Kill the very concept, concept of journalistic integrity, that's kind of a joke almost, and mm-hmm. throttle the flow of information from sources and whistleblowers concerning which is, which is the legitimacy of journalists they, they, they con, uh, contact. So the FBI now will go undercover and interview people, and if they're being a whistleblower, they can arrest them. They, can, they lie, and they can lie to anyone they want. So I, 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 never, I never did like the press. When I was a few things done to give them the press, I, I, a couple of them treated me fair, but most of them will take your words, change the meaning of them, pay, partially quote you. Mm-hmm. They won't be fair if you're going to live a Christian life, especially. So yeah, that's dangerous. Any comments so far? Uh, again, I still could not hardly believe when our children came home from school. This was Tiger's Valley. 
and they were told to look at, to do research on countries and use CIA.gov as their source. Really? <laughs> use the CIA is now involved in education. I still get the fact that I was kicked out of Tiger Valley High School after I graduated, years later. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I was going to speak one time. You were going to speak at a commencement, wasn't it? Yeah, and uh, they won't let me. Anyway, it's amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. For eight years, Mich Michigan and Gerald and Ro Royella Ostapal have been fighting the seizure and forfeiture of hundreds of thousand dollars worth of their property. Last month, they prevailed when a judge ordered the return of, of virtually everything that had been taken from them. But the Ostapal's victory was short-lived, for they soon discovered that the <coughs> Saginaw County Sheriff's Office sold their property years ago while their forfeiture case was still being actively litigated. Think about the audacity of that. So it's back to the court for the of Ostapals. A couple filed a federal lawsuit in the United States District Court for, on Eastern District, Michigan, seeking damages for the wrongful theft of their property. The case should be a, be a clear call to all Americans that is that is that it's a long past time to reign in our nation's abuse-prone civil fortress system. The system started off with the best intentions. In the 70s and 80s, the federal government said the states began to turn to civil asset fortress law to enable the seizure of property used to facilitate crime to target the ill-gotten gains of the worst offenders, drug cartels, kingpins, and money launderers. Only over time, however, that narrow focus has been replaced by a broad grant of authority to seize their, and forfeit property from virtually anyone for a host of alleged crimes. In 2008, the Saginaw Law County Sheriff's the Deputies executed a search warrant at the Austin Paul's second home, a farmhouse in a neighboring rural, rural Shawashi County. Why the sheriffs were operating outside their own county is unclear. Now, why would a sheriff's office go to the next county? I thought that was totally out of bounds. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. They discovered that the Austin Paul's adult son, Stephen, who was living there at the time, was, giving, was growing marijuana. The deputies proceeded to seize every item of the pers of personal property and in the home and the adjacent outbuilding, regardless of whether that property was owned by Stephen or his parents. Yeah, I'll talk about that through here. It goes on, well, anyway, go down and say that they, find, they got to court. This has been eight years ago. They finally got to court, won the case, and all the property been sold. They're raising money for the, for the department to pay the bills. And then when they were fighting the case, they were paying for the people that they had to fight yeah. and the attorneys yeah. to fight them. Exactly. Think about this, folks. <laughs> uh, it's a racket. Mm -hmm. this, this is Manville, New Jersey again. A young boy, a, a 12th grader actually, he's a young man now. Uh, and I'll, I'll give it to you. I can't even... Students suspended, visit of a cops, for psychic evaluation for a pro-Second Amendment school project. Manville, New Jersey. Time out, lunch detention, and in-school suspension are all forms of discipline, among others, which teachers have, have employed to punish students for misbehavior. After Frank Harvey, 17, <clears throat> a man of New Jersey school senior, completed a pro-Second Amendment project, his school ordered him to get his head checked. Head checked? Head checked. For life? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 The incident began Monday after Harvey, after, after Harvey, as many students sometimes do, left his USB drive in the computer lab. Another student opened Harvey's 11th, 11th grade project and reported him, him to school official. Now he's in the 12th grade now. He's mm -hmm. in 11th grade. At 7 p.m. Monday evening, Harvey's family said they were paid a visit by local law enforcement who investigated Harvey's claims that the project had been, had, was from last, year, last, from last year, school year and cleared him of any criminal mischief. Now let's stop and think of me. The boy did a, an article on pro-gun and the cops were going to his house. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Stop police. But uh, we'll get there in a minute, Phil. But that apparently wasn't enough to satisfy the Manville School District, who suspended, suspended and then discovery of his anti-gun control project. It seems a teacher who assigned the work can no longer recall having done so. The 12th grader d disagrees, and so does his family. Harvey said the teacher approved his topic against gun control. He completed the project and received an A for his efforts. Harvey is now a 12th grader, says he completed the project in an assignment for, the, his, in for his college career readiness class during the 2015-16 school year. Mm -hmm. Screenshots of the video project titled About, About Guns shows Harvey, Harvey's position was supportive of an individual right to self-defense using guns. He cited several incidents involving home break-ins that were th thwarted when the home homeowner fought back with a firearm. Harvey also inserted a few political cartoons which, which suggested citizens should arm themselves in the event of an active shooter scenario, and another, another which stated gun-free zones don't keep citizens safer. 
The Harvey's family, so disturbed by the demand their son undergo a psychological <coughs> evaluation and desiring a clear, uh, to clear their son's name, took their case to court of public opinion and notified New Jersey's News Channel 12. I've never been, I've never been a violent person, the soft-spoken young man told reporter Char- uh, Chris Keating, uh, adding, I've never had a detention in my life. Explaining further, he said, it was assigned by the teacher, and I got the topic which, it, with, which was anti-gun control approved by the teacher. Harvey's mother, Mary Vernon, uh, I'm, not, I'm not taking him for a psychological evaluation because this teacher is lying and won't own up to the, what she did. Vervin, Vervin alleges the teacher signed it, and my son did his homework, and he got kicked out of school for it. They basically labeled him pigeonholed. They basically labeled, they basically labeled him pigeonholed them, tormented him, told, hold, uh, hold that against them, watch every move they make, Brennan said, in the reference to the treatment of her son received. The, Man- the Manville School District refused to comment, comment on Harvey's individual case with the, with the reporters, but the incident now made now made national news and what happened appears to be a, yet another suppression of the students' right to free speech. Those free speech involving the position, a position of sporting firearms. Now listen to this, folks. His family, instead of complying with the school district orders, withdrew Harvard from Manville High School and now saying he's focused on earning his, C- his CED. GED. GED, yeah. yeah. Now think about this. Uh, he had scholarship money, too, evidently. Well, he, he has to, he, he's ready to graduate. He's not going to graduate from school. Let's go get his GED. Well, first of all, we're not only talking about political correctness in the extreme here. We're talking about a bunch of liars in the system that they're, they're the moral meltdown that they're lying that he even was did everything right that he actually you know yeah exactly so you know it's really bad. I'm running out of time here so quick. I'm gonna try to wrap it up in two minutes, but I got more to go through. Washington, you mentioned about stop, stop police. Mm-hmm. Washington uh, State goes. After pre-crime, gun confiscation proposed for those likely to commit violence in their near future. Oh, my God. Glad I don't know that state anymore. <laughs> well, and I'm going to read the all the time. Washington. Washington. This act is designed to temporarily prevent individuals who are in, at a high risk of harming themselves or others from accessing firearms by allowing family and household members and police to obtain a court order then, then when there is demonstrated evidence that the person possesses a significant danger, including a dangerous result of dangerous mental health crisis or violent behavior. So these show that individuals who, who engage in certain dangerous behaviors are significantly more likely to commit violence toward themselves or others in, our, in the near future. The bill does say that any family member can turn you in, or any one you're living with can turn you in, if you think a, a boy can turn a girlfriend in, a girlfriend can turn a boy in, or whatever, and they'll come and take you guns for at least a year. And in only about 30 stations, I was labeled as dangerous radio stations. Oh, uh, yeah, about uh, absolutely. Stations, I was labeled dangerous. So any disgruntled former dating partner can allege mentally, mental dis- and, and instability and have someone's personal property confiscated as a form of retribution. And here are people uh, demonstrating it passed. I'm a walking dead. That's not a zombie. Mm, I don't want to, I don't have time to go. I just want time to go the detail. I'm going to hurry through these. Drug tests now being administrated randomly at middle schools to indoctrinate children into the pharma police state. Yeah, they've been doing that. Mm-hmm. It's a natural news, but it's just going to say that uh, if you're going to be on uh, any kind of like athletic team, you got to go through drug testing, or you don't be on the team. I'm going to get a copy of um, Rappaport, John Rappaport's uh, show on vaccines. Mm-hmm. on uh, Coast to Coast, and uh, fortunately I got to call in and tell Olivia's story. And, and they actually say that I was running for governor and uh, I'd been thrown <laughs> off the ballot. And that was uh, amazing. Well, you know, that was good good publicity that threw you off. That, they did you a favor. So far, I just take the lemons. I make that. That's right. But now students are, that are going to be uh, are going to be going to running for, are going to be playing on sport teams in this, in this certain area. I'm trying to find the area here. Uh, has to undergo drug testing or they can't play the sport. Mm-hmm. And for the first time, this is not in America, but it will be here. Child euthanized in Belgium, no age limit to kill children. This is from Pastor, I mean, uh, oh, Captain Payne Schmidt. <clears throat> if a child understands, they say old enough to comprehend what they're doing, they can euthanize them. If they want, in other words, if they want to, to die. Yeah. They can kill. That's that's what they're doing. Okay. Oh boy. Well, do you realize 
how many times just about every child has said oh yeah that. yeah mm -hmm. yes whenever i was a child i was very depressive as a child and wanted to in my own life but I'm here today. Amen. You know? and, and, and then, you know, it's I like. I got over it, obviously. Well, it's known, it's known that when, when uh, literature class studies Romeo and Juliet, they go, the female mm -hmm. member of Suicides goes up. It's amazing. <clears throat> Remember some months ago we talked about the babies going to be born with three parents? Uh huh. Yeah. Well, they did it. Two and mommies and a daddy? Two mommies and a daddy. They took they took the DNA out of one woman, put it in the in the mother, to, to, to supposedly wipe out a disease the mother may have, and so they got a three parent baby there. Wow. Mm, brave new world. Again. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and they, they, this sounds feel we're six months to years ahead of what everybody else is. We covered this long before it happens. We did. Navy requires all sailors to undergo transgender education by, by July 2017. Oh, I wouldn't doubt that. Transgender education. I well, you remember when they had, the, you know, I think it was in the Army, um, they had to wear high heels. Oh, yeah. And put, March in them. And they had to put uh, pillows in their stomach to pretend like, like they pregnant. were pregnant. Yes. It was yes. uh, conditioning. It was, um, I forget what they called it. It was a conditioning exercise. Transgender man gives birth to his own baby in, in World First. Uh, transgender man, a woman won't be a man, and a man will be a woman, got married, and they had a baby. And I'm not going to take time to read dog to you, but they said the law before demanded that there be, a, that to <coughs> recognize a woman, you had to be castrated. We are the same as other families, even though we might not have the same rights, mm -hmm. we're, we're the same. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's this, this. So, is, so, the, so the one who said she was a man had the baby, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, then she wasn't a man. No, she wasn't. <laughs> the that man that said he was a woman wasn't a woman. I, oh, oh, <laughs> ben Franklin said that the, that the Constitution was doomed to despotism. Yeah. Patrick Henry said he will I'll not attend the convention. And here's exactly why. The 14th Amendment, Title IV, according to this uh, federal judge, trying to find a name here, a Jude, judge Pamela P Pepper said that the Constitution requires that we have transgender bathrooms. Where does she say that? She says, uh, she says uh, Article, uh, uh, Article 4, I mean, Title 4, uh, 14th Amendment. Mm -hmm. Everybody's treated equal in the law. Well, if that's true. Well, how about well, murders? How about I'd like it murders and rapists. Why not? I mean, that's all. Come on now, Where folks. Who are we the judge, mm -hmm. right? This is what the Constitution does when you put we the people as God. Mm-hmm. Okay, there'd be some good news. Court okay to right to pray in Jesus' name at county meetings. Today in the U.S. Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled two to one in favor of Rowan County, North Carolina County Commissioners in a lawsuit filed by the American Civil Civil Liberties Union challenged their constitutional right to open their meetings with prayers, uh, reports to the council. So that this is one good bit of good news that they can open the prayers in this county in North Carolina in the name of Jesus. I wish they would do that in Randolph County. They just do yeah. generic Father God. Chief Dustin's Roy Moore was put on trial the day before yesterday by nine appointed judges. They're not judges. There were no judges at all. <clears throat> That's what they said. They found him guilty of uh, disobeying Supreme Court with the same-sex marriage. So he was the Chief Justice of Alabama Supreme Court, right? Right, right. Now imagine, he's the Chief Justice of a state Supreme Court. They take him out of office because he, went, he told his judges not to honor same-sex marriage. They took him out, and they suspended him for the rest of his term, which is basically a death sentence for him as far as uh, he's run for governor also now. But he's going to appeal the case. Show you what they can do. If you're a, if you're a Supreme Court judge, <coughs> they can take you down. What can do to guys like me if they Trump. want you bad enough? Well, we've heard, we heard about that from a gentleman, that, a friend of ours that lives in Alabama. And he's the one that texted us and told us that he was suspended. I've got five minutes. I'm going to try to cover the last thing here. Now, I may have shared a bit this last time. I don't know. If it is, I'll come do it again. I want you to see what happened in our nation, how much has changed, and it's only been 100 years ago. 100, I mean, even 200 years ago. Think about this. The country says, uh, this is, uh, the country is deeply engrafted upon Christianity and not upon the doctrines of those imposters, Muhammad or Grand Lama. Now, this thing about this, this is what was said in 1811. 
Chief Justice James Ken explained in People vs. Ruggles 1811 that made oaths effective. In Taylor's case, the court said that the Christianity was partial of the law and to cast uh, continuous reproaches upon it tended to weaken the foundation of moral obligation and the efficacy of oaths. Now, let that sink in when you say it. How you gonna know who, I mean, if the person, if you can't trust their word, how do you testify? Yeah. Who do you trust? <clears throat> A bronze statue of Chancellor James Kent is in the Library of Congress main, main reading room in the Thomas Jefferson Building. Chief Justice James Kent wrote in People's Rulings 1811, uh, in case of, of Rex vs. Wilson, the court said, whatever strikes at the root of Christianity tends, to, tends manifestly to the dissolution of civil government. Woo! Mm -hmm. How has that changed? The same doctrine once laid down in, in the late case of the King versus Williams, the authorities show that blasphemy against God, now listen to this, and contempt, con contemptuous <coughs> reproaches and profane ridicule of Christ or the Holy Scriptures are offenses punishable by common law. Yeah. Listen to what's being said. That's never brought up in any debate, is it? Because it tends to corrupt the morals of the people and to destroy good order, they are treated as, effecti as, as affecting the essential... Uh, Quality and need as formerly of all moral discipline of, of those principles of virtue which help to bind society together. The people of this state in common with the people of this country profess the general doctrines of Christianity as a rule of their faith and practice. And, and to scandalize the author of these doctrines is not only in a religious point of view extremely impious, but even in respect to the obligations of due to society is a gross violation of decency and good order. Phil Hudoff. We have a new moral compass, Butch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at the new compass. The Can't compass continue. Is, well, it, it, this yeah, this is unbelievable. I mean, this is right here in our in a riser of our of our nation. And look what today is. If this is about to end the Supreme Court today, oh, they probably arrest you. I, I told the Dominion Post. I said, read the preamble. Read the preamble of the West Virginia Constitution, and it says that you know that we are here blessed by God, and and basically, uh, it you know makes God the sovereign over all of us. It's in our West Virginia preamble. And the preamble sets the stage for the Constitution. In other words, it says, here's what we want, here's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Here's what this is all about, the preamble. And Kent continued, nothing could be more offensive to the, virt to the virtuous part of the community or more in interest to the tender morals of the young than declaring such profanity lawful. Always oh, he an old fogey and sticking the mud, wasn't he? Now you can kill him. Things which corrupt moral sentiment as obscene actions, prints and writings, and even gross instances of seduction have upon the same principle been, been held indictable. Now look at that. Obscene actions, prints and writings, and gross instances of seduction are indictable. Wow! The free, equal, and undisturbed enjoyment of religious, religious opinion <clears throat> is granted, but to, but to revile with malicious and blasphemous contempt the religion professed by almost the whole community is an abuse of that right. Nor, nor, nor are we bound to punish indiscriminately the like attacks upon the religion of Muhammad or a moment or the Grand Lama, for this plain reason that we are a Christian people and the morality of the country is deeply engrafted upon Christianity and not upon the doctrines of worship of those impostors. Wow! And today, if you speak that, you're considered a hater, a hater, a, hater, a racist, whatever. Chief Justice Kent said further, it is significant that the common law checks upon words and actions dangerous to the public welfare whose morals have been elevated and inspired with a more enlarged in, in benevolence by means of the Christian religion. Through the, through the Constitution, though the Constitution has discarded religious establishments, it does not forbid judicial uh, cognizances, cognizances of those offenses against religion and morality. Punishable because they strike at the root of moral obligation and weaken the security of, of, the, total, of the social ties. The free exercise and enjoyment of religious profession and worship without discrimination or, pre or preference should be forever thereafter be allowed within the state to all mankind. It was never meant to withdraw religion in general and with, with it the best sanctions of moral and social obligation from all consideration and notice of law. 
to continue to continue to construe it as breaking down the common law barriers against the sinister, wanton, wanton, and impious attacksable Christianity itself will be an enormous perversion of this meaning. The proviso, the proviso guards the article from such dangerous latitude of construction when it declares that the liberty of conscience is hereby granted shall not be so construed as to excuse acts of lasciviousness. How in the name of God did we get from that to this? Coolidge said the worst evil that could be, could be uh, inflicted upon the youth of the land will be to leave them without restraint and completely mm -hmm. at, at the mercy of their own uncontrolled, uncontrolled inclinations. <clears throat> Under such conditions, education will be impossible and all orderly development intellectually or morally would be hopeless. Mm -hmm. That's right. I do not need to picture the result. We know too well that weakness and depravity follow when the ordinary processes of discipline are, de are neglected. Mm -hmm. Coolidge also said, the very first paragraph of the Declaration of Independence asserted that they proposed to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal state in which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitled them. And as they closed that noble document, they, they again revealed what they believed to be the ultimate source of authority by stating that they were also appealing to the supreme judge of the world for the rectitude of their intentions. When finally a constitution was adopted, it contained specific provisions that the president and members of Congress and of the state legislatures and all executive and judicial officers should be qualified for the discharge of their office by oath or affirmation. By the statute of law of the United States, such oaths are administrated by a solemn appeal to God for help in the keeping of the covenants. I scarcely need to refer to the fact that the House of Congress and so, and so as I know the state legislatures opened their daily session with prayer. The foundation of our independence and our governments rest, rest, rest upon basic religious convictions. Back of the authority of our laws is the authority of the supreme judge of the world to whom we shall, we shall still appeal for their final justification. All liberty is individual liberty. The principle of equality is recognized. It follows in, in, inevitably from the belief in the brotherhood of man through the fatherhood of God. When once the right of individual to liberty and equality is admitted, there is no escape mm -hmm. from the conclusion that the, he alone is entitled to the re rewards of his own industry. Ooh. So we see mm -hmm. absolutely with this one little document here, how far we come as a nation of some moral values and convictions built on a Christian faith to where now Christianity is no longer allowed in any part of society. And what do we have to show for that? Was that American Minute? Yeah. yeah. That's what I thought. What do we have to show for that? Now, everybody Chaos. think a minute. Chaos, yes. disorder, mm -hmm. evil of all kinds being praised as being natural. Mm -hmm. But he said when the young people are, are, are taking, uh, let loose without restraint, it tends to destroy society. Mm -hmm. Any comments before we close for this section? Want to say anything, Phil? Four minute video coming up. All right, folks. Back a little bit. Why do nice guys often finish last? It's a big club, and you ain't in it. <laughs> you and I are not in the big club. By the way, it's the same big club they use to beat you over the head with all day long when they tell you what to believe. All day long, beating you over the head in their media, telling you what to believe, what to think, and what to buy. The table is tilted, folks. The game is rigged. Is George Carlin correct? Is the media telling you what to believe and what to think? I'm Phil Hudock, candidate for governor. And this is nice, Phil. However, I'm not a happy camper. Now, no more Mr. Nice Guy. You might say, why not be Mr. Nice Guy? Do we have representatives that are selected democratically? And does everyone get a fair shake in the media? Is it about the public getting to hear issues from all candidates? The politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice. You don't. You have no choice. You have owners. They own you. It's a big club, and you ain't in it. <laughs> you and I are not in the big club. And nobody seems to notice. Nobody seems to care. Haven't we all begun to accept that the average Joe has no chance? Is that what we want to leave our children? And isn't that the nobility that a revolution was a repudiation of? Fasten your seatbelts. The following is a case in point 
of how, in the election process, the game is rigged, the fix is in. It's time to notice, and it's time to care. I'm going to get in trouble for what I'm going to say. This is, this is going to hurt me professionally. What did Hoppy just say? I'm going to get in trouble for what I'm going to say. This is, this is going to hurt me professionally. It was 2014. Hoppy and Howard Monroe are planning the debates for U.S. Senate. Hear more of their conniving to craft the debates for the U.S. Senate race. And I hate to see him shut out, but I also think we have to look at what's, uh, you know, what's the, the important uh, issue, what are the important issues for the state. Who is Howard shutting out? Phil Hudock, Constitution Party. Bob Baber, Mountain Party. John Buckley, Libertarian Party. Is it true that we didn't have any important issues? I understand that this is August 15th, and I hadn't made ballot access yet. All this information's on hudoc.com. Bob Baber and I protested outside the Clay Center in the rain while Shelley and Natalie debated. It's important to note that West Virginia Public Broadcasting is not sponsoring this year's debate. We have a, we have a common cause. We have a common cause. Yes, we have different views, but we're united in this cause because if you don't have fair elections, then you can't have a representative, uh, you know, government, a constitutional elected. A democratically elected constitutional republic, which is what we have. We don't have a democracy. We have a republic where the rights of even the minority is protected. See, if we had just a pure democracy, that would mean majority rules. But we have a constitution, and if we don't have the rule of law, then we don't have people allowing, uh, being allowed to get their issues out so that everyone has, you know, you're part of the fourth estate. Your job is to make sure that the people know and have the information they need to make intelligent choices. You're not to be the fourth right. What we have in there is the fourth right, who is basically deciding what's best for the rest of the people. They decide who gets to speak with the government, and that's unacceptable to me. I will not, I don't tolerate it, I don't move with. They're playing their cards, and we're forcing them to play their cards. Fortunately, there is a second debate now scheduled by uh, public broadcast. It is going to be inclusive to have everyone in it. And I'm really looking forward to that. And we will see who shows up for that. It should be all the candidates. And if all the candidates aren't there, that's going to be very sad. And like I said, we'll see who shows up. Hi, my name is Karen White, and I am running for House of Delegates in the 27th District, which is Mercer County, West Virginia. Um, all I wanted to say was I feel very, very left out somehow when five people are running for House of Delegates in Mercer County, and they put four people in the newspaper and my name beside it. My name is in there, but not a picture. So kind of felt left out about that and it seems to be happening everywhere including the fake debate that that we're at tonight well I just want to thank uh, Phil Huddock from the uh, Constitution Party uh, you know we really don't agree on a whole lot on the issues but I have enormous respect for the man uh, both he and myself and John Buckley too for that matter and the libertarian we're all spending our own money here to run and we're not taking money from the big boys, don't have money from the big gals, all that. So I will fight to the death for John's ability and Phil's ability and mine to speak to the people of the state of West Virginia. And I believe that in a democracy, let the, let the, people, let the people running that are on the ballot speak and let the people of West Virginia vote and choose amongst them. That's democracy at work. What we have behind here and what's happening tonight is, is a pure farce. It truly is a fake debate. And it's all about money and access and the media colluding together. So I'm honored to be here tonight. Thank you. Our voice does count. There's only one kind of candidate in West Virginia to be on the ballot. 
not second class, not back of the bus, at the table, a seat at the table, not left out in the rain like we were here today and chased off the property. Listen to the hubris of what Howard Monroe and Hoppy Kerchival say next. It's a deal. Let's have lunch. Let your opinions be heard, but let's, let's ex accept the, the reality that there are two uh, major candidates here. I'm and, in for it. And, and, then, and then I'll spring for lunch. I'm going to get in trouble for what I'm going to say. This is, this is going to hurt me professionally because there's a, I may be involved in the debate. Okay, I may. And after I say this, I may not. That was a conversation I, I like. I, I just called him in his office. He was. It was almost as though we weren't even on the air for that. Guess who's steamed? Hudak. And for another piece of the big picture, on February 20, 2014, candidate Phil Hudak asked Hoppy if he would interview him upon making the ballot for U.S. Senate. Hoppy's reply: You can't win. A week later, here is how Hoppy is bushwhacked by Kelly Cannon and her husband. Hey, Hoppy Kirchhoff, how are you? Nice to meet I'm you. Fine. Could I ask you a question? Okay. If Phil Hudock is on the ballot, would you interview him? What is he, what's he running for? U.S. Senate. What, on what party? Constitutional party. Sure. 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 Put it on record. I'll interview him. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Is the issue really this black and white? But wait, there's more. On Hoppy's September 9, 2016 Steam release, Hoppy read the following text. I'm steamed you are mentioning Phil Hudock's bid for governor. The Southern Poverty Law Center included him on their top 10 dangerous candidate list. Hoppy's reply to the text, Just FYI, I barely mention him and I'm not having him on the show. Here's the screenshot that was forwarded to me and an image and audio from the phone Hoppy texted. I'm steamed you're mentioning Phil Huddock's bid for governor. The Southern Poverty Law Center included him on their top 10 dangerous candidate list. Call back 304-614-50382-1304-614-50382. Sent September 9th, 11.48 a.m. From 3048255304. Just fee, I barely mention him, and I'm not having him on the show. September 9th, 11.54 a.m. Jim Justice, Hoppy Interviewed. Bill Cole, Hoppy interviewed. David Moran, Hoppy interviewed. Coming up, Charlotte Pritt, Hoppy interviewed. Hoppy's not going to have me on the show, so now, no more Mr. Nice Guy. Now you might ask, who doc? Why are you dressed up like a Native American? Well, I don't have time here for the whole story, but it's a good one. So be sure and ask me on the campaign trail, because this train is moving on. Hey, if you don't mind your face being digitally mapped and being put in a criminal database, don't worry. Just be compliant at the DMV. What I've presented here should lead to severely curtailing the big club. If not, it's not my fault. We all have a horse in this race. Do you care? Are you riding in the back of the bus? Or are you in the race? My campaign website is hudok.com, H-U-D-O-K.com. I have Facebook pages Philip Hudok and Mr. Obama Head. And don't forget to contact the Press and Broadcasters Association. It's really time to repent and turn from our wicked ways. Or else, it's the end, because it's certainly close to it.